seated. I'd just like to say first, what a tremendous testimony. Mm. Shows what a great, wonderful, and precious woman that Myra was. Amen. I'd like to say on behalf of the family, to all those that are gathered here this afternoon, uh, that I know they appreciate all your prayers and your love and support during this time. And also, we're so very gracious to have quite a few joining us by the way of Zoom from Jamaica, because Myra had a tremendous impact there in Jamaica, and so I'm glad that you're able to be with us this afternoon. Thank you so much for taking part in this service. Let us pray. Father, as we come to you this afternoon, Lord, we ask that you would strengthen this family. We pray that your grace and your comfort would be real in their hearts and lives. Your scripture tells us that you're the God of all grace and you're the God of all comfort and you're the God that supplies peace that passes understanding. Lord, I pray that each family member would know your wonderful grace, your love, your comfort, and your peace, as well as all the friends that have gathered here as we honor Myra today. How we ask you to come amongst us and your presence be felt in a powerful way. I pray that you would help us to pay proper respects to Sister Myra for her life as we celebrate her homegoing. Lord, we thank you that we have confidence that she had placed her faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we know the scripture tells us to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so we rejoice that she's in your presence. But also we feel sorrow for someone that's so special that showed such great and deep love to us. Lord, it hurts. But I'm glad that you're able to sustain and help. The scripture tells us that you're a very present help in the time of need. Lord, please help this family and these friends. Help us in this service. I pray now that you wrap your loving arms around us and let us all feel your loving care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Elmira Jane Williams Brady age 77 of Ashboro, went home to be with the Lord Friday, July the 9th at Randolph Hospice House. Mrs. Brady, a native of Randolph County, was born August the 30th, 1943, the daughter of Lloyd and Polly Williams. Mrs. Brady was a graduate of Seagrove High School and a graduate of Artistic Beauty College. She was co-owner of Brady Car and Truck Center where she was secretary, treasurer, supervisor, and did payroll. She just ran the show. That's, that's, that's what it is. <laughs> Mrs. Brady was a long-standing active member of Hope Well Friends Meeting, and we were blessed because of it. She also coordinated and taught children who attended the Jamaican Friends Bible School for over 25 years. Mrs. Brady was a member and past president of Ashboro's Business Women's Association. She was a loving mother and grandmother and a true friend to all who knew her. In addition to her parents, Mrs. Brady was preceded in death by her husband, Louis Wayne Brady, brother Deward Williams, and son-in-law Keith Sawyer. She is survived by daughter Rhonda Sawyer of McLeansville, sons Kevin Brady of Ashboro, Ken Brady and his wife Scarlett 
of Ashboro, grandson Brandon, so I don't forget. Brandon, right there, buddy. I know one of the times I got to see her, man, all she could do is brag about your prayer and how much that meant to her. Bless your heart, buddy. Mm. Sorry about that. If I didn't say it, I'd forget probably. Of Harrisburg, two great-grandchildren, Cooper and Logan Sawyer, brother Talmadge and his wife Dolores Williams of Cary, sisters Ruth and her husband Raven Sellers of Troy, Elvira Calicut of Troy, Cora and her husband Larry Cranford of Sophia. Thank God for that testimony again. I pray that God will continue to bless as we move forward in this celebration today. At this time, we're going to have a song by the Striders, He Hideth My Soul. Sister Becky Boger is going to come share a poem with us. I'd like to thank the family for honoring me and allowing me to do this. Um, I shouldn't have any trouble talking about my, my or myself. 
I met Myra in 1966. Um, we were both a lot younger and a lot slimmer then. <laughs> and she invited me to bring my young daughter down to her house for an Easter egg hunt. And that's when she still had the beauty shop and so that's how I got to know Myra and of course through the years here at the church and we became very good friends. Uh, we've been halfway around the world together. We've uh, had some good times and we've had some bad times. Uh, but we never ran out of anything to talk about. Uh, she would come to my house at night after she's had a meeting or something and we'd sit at my kitchen table and have a cup of coffee and Finally, about 10 or 10.30, she said, well, I better go home. Wayne don't know where I'm at. So, um, I'd like to give you just a little bit uh, of this background on this poem. The family received this poem um, from a very dear person in Jamaica. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about it. Um, in 1991, Myra went to a meeting um, with some friends from the yearly meeting, she went to Miami and she met a lady named Angela Bahari. And they were talking about Bible school and Christian ed, which you know that was Myra's thing. And so Angela said, I sure would love to have somebody to come to Jamaica and let's have a Bible school. Myra said, I'll go. And so in 1992, uh, Myra persuaded um, me and four more ladies from North Carolina Yearly Meeting, and we went to Jamaica, and we were prepared for um, around 150 to 200 kids. We had over 400, and uh, God blessed us. We had a wonderful spirit, and so from 1992 until 2017, uh, North Carolina Yearly Meeting sent Myra and various other peoples to Jamaica and I have a wonderful work that's still going on down there. So, this poem is written by Myra's goddaughter. We call her Little Myra. When she was born, her mother asked Myra if it would be all right if she named her Myra. And so her name is Myra. And so we would always say Miss Myra for Myra and Little Myra. And she has written this poem and I'd like to read it just for you. Um, her husband is currently the pastor of Dover Friends Meeting, which is one of the churches that we did Bible school at every year. And if you'll notice the beautiful um, um, piece of material that's, that's here in front of me, this is a sample of what they do in Jamaica. And, and Myra was always so supportive of everything that they did. And uh, I can just appreciate it so much. So I'd like to read the poem now, please. It says, Heaven Gained an Angel. Heaven needed you, Mom, even though it broke my heart in two. I knew that it was time you gained your wings and flew. You were a special person, an angel, in fact. All that kindness and the love in your heart will grow even stronger now that we are apart. You've touched so many lives with all the things you've done. Wow, our journey now has just begun. All the times you were there, just to simply show how much you care. You meant the world to me, I cannot deny. You were truly a blessing, an angel in disguise. I wish you could have stayed, but mom, I know, heaven needed you, and so you had to go. I'll hold your memories dear in my heart, for you were an inspiration right from the start. You were an angel, my angel in fact. You were the best thing that ever happened to me. I love you so much, Mom. Sleep in peace forever in our hearts. And as I've said, this was written by Myra Nugent Moody, who is our Myra Brady's goddaughter. Now we have another blessing all the way from Jamaica. Sister Joan, if you'll come up, she's going to share with us in song. Hello, everybody. Hello. My name is Joan. And I'm just going to say, miracles still happen. 
Miss Myra came to us for over how many years, and she came directly into our life. I used to be the one to open the church, accept her, and every time she would say, Joan, I say, yes, Miss Myra, and I come. And after everything, last year I was planning to come to US, but because of COVID, it didn't work out. And then this year I am here. And the reason why I'm here is because of Miss Myra. Miss Myra and I spoke the week before she went into the hospital. And I said, Miss Myra, I'd like to come. And she said, if I reach California, I should call her and tell her I could come and visit her. And the day came and I called her and she said, I am to come and visit her because she's not well. And I buy the ticket for the Wednesday. And the Tuesday, Miss Rhonda called and said, Joan, mommy's in the hospital. Are you still going to come? And I said, yes, I would like to visit her in the hospital and care for her until September. It wasn't meant to be. And uh, when I reach, we talk. And the Sunday, Miss Rhonda called and said, mom would like to speak to you. And when I reached the hospital, it was a farewell message. We hugged and we cried. And I said, God, I didn't come here to come to this. I came here to look after Miss Mara. And I asked a question and there was no answer. But today I get the answer. Miss Mara came into her life as a miracle. And yesterday when I visited Miss Myra at the house that she was lying. I would visit her in the house where she would stay. And today, I am looking at Miss Myra and I can call her name even though she can't call mine. Miss Myra would be in church now. Today is the second week of July and this is our day in Jamaica. But because God know that Miss Myra wouldn't be in Jamaica, God caused me to be here. And I thank God for that. I was there, see the band? And it said, Faith over fear. And I got the opportunity to say something to small, some small children. It was difficult. I said to Miss Rhonda, It is not easy for big people to have faith. And these little children may not understand. But holding on to God's hand, this is where faith leads me. Miss Myra is the love. She will never come out of her, my heart, Jamaica heart. And I am faith. And now that faith and love meet together, I'm going to call it celebration. I think I am here to celebrate the life of Miss Myra. And I hope and pray that when we get gifts in our lives, we'll cherish it. We we'll love it. And if anything happens, we forgive each other and love again and move on. Because pastor won't have you all the while. One, a time will come when pastor will be missing. And a time will come when pastor will only look and say, sister, this was here, brother, this was here, deacon, this was here, and you are missing. Really missing don't really mean death. My missing right always means separated. And what I want to tell you, Nothing can separate me from Miss Myra's love. Once upon a time, I thought that death could, but now that I know that death cannot. And that is what I want to say to you. Nothing will take Miss Myra's place. Miss Myra did ask me to sing a song. And then little Myra said, Auntie Joan, please sing a song for Miss Myra that she loved. And that is the old rugged cross. So I'm going to see if I can do any good to this song. Can you play it? Love that old cross where the dearest. 
my song. Because Miss Mara did ask me to sing a song. And it is all the things that I love and hold dear to my heart. Do you know that one, man? All the things that I love. <laughs> okay. And this one is for me and Miss Myra. All the things that I love and all dear to my heart, they're just borrowed. They are not mine at all. Jesus only let me use them to brighten my life and remind me, remind me, dear Lord. Roll back the curtain of memory now and then show me where you brought me from and where i could have been remember i am human and humans forget so remind me remind me memories now and then show me where you brought me from and where I could have been please remember I am human and humans forget so remind me remind Thank you for putting up with me. <laughs> Thank you, Joan. That was wonderful. Great blessing. Amen. Didn't know we were going to get two songs. And I didn't know you were going to be accompanied by the piano either, but good job. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> all right, it all worked out. Um, I wish I knew more of the family, but Rhonda and Ken and Kevin, my heart goes out to you. I know when a boy and a girl or a man and woman fall in love, sometimes we call it love at first sight. I don't know what it is when two people have a great bond and friendship right from the moment they meet. But that's what I have with your mom. Wow, sorry. I only knew her for a short time, but felt a deep, deep love. And she loved me dearly, and I appreciate her for that. I'll share maybe a couple comments that allude to that here in just a moment. I was trying to think, what scripture do I read? And my mind went back and forth. But what kept coming to my mind over and over again was Proverbs 31. And I know all of you are probably familiar with that. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but verses 10 through 12, verse 17, verse 20, and then verses 25 through 31, I think summarize Myra to a T. Who can find a virtuous and capable wife? She is more precious than rubies. Her husband can trust her and she will greatly enrich his life. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. 
She is energetic and strong, a hard worker. She extends a helping hand to the poor and opens her arms to the needy. She is clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. When she speaks, her words are wise, and she gives instructions with kindness. She carefully watches everything in her household and suffers nothing for laziness. Her children stand and bless her. Her husband praises her. There are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty does not last, but a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. Reward her for all she has done let her deeds publicly declare her praise. And certainly, those verses are true of Sister Myra. I wasn't sure what to title this, but now I feel strongly that God led me the right direction. Joan, you actually said something, and you used the word gift. Myra, a precious gift from God. I'm going to use that word gift as an acrostic to share about what, or what Proverbs 31 just said. But before I do, I'm reminded of a young lady that was in the Special Olympics. Her name was Cherie. She had a friend named Mark who was responsible for keeping her on task and getting her to the starting line on time and encouraging her. Well, Mark gets her to the starting line on time, the gun fires, and she takes off, and I mean, she's like a lightning bolt. She is down the track, way ahead of all the other competitors. Just before crossing the finish line, she stops, she turns around, and she said, y'all come on, come on, come on. She encouraged every one of them to catch up with her, so that they all could win at the same time. To me, that's Myra and what she spoke into my life. She wanted everyone to be successful. I know years ago, you may remember these commercials, quite a few years ago, maybe. But usually, like in a restaurant or a crowded place, someone There'd be a lot of noise, a lot of talking going on, and all of a sudden someone would say, well, E.F. Hutton says, dead silence. And everybody was listening. And then in a minute they finished the commercial and it says, when E.F. Hutton talks, people listen. Well, they got it wrong. When Myra talks, people listen. <laughs> That was my experience anyway. I'm sure it was at the shop. It was here at the meeting. I'm sure it was in Jamaica <laughs> as well. <laughs> but as we think about her being that precious gift from God, the G is gracious. And when I say gracious, I mean kind, pleasant, generous, giving. She was that way in the words that she spoke and in the deeds that she did. She was a gracious host. I remember the first time I visited at their house, I was like, wow, I love this big banquet room that you've got here. Well, I think there was probably class reunions and family get-togethers and a lot of different things. She was a gracious host. But also, when I think about her being gracious, I think about how she was to me. Even though I knew her a short time, she told me that she loved me often. That was great encouragement to me. As Joan was talking about being at the hospital 
and she thought she was coming from Jamaica to spend time and stay with her to September, but yet in that hospital room she was saying her farewell, her goodbye. I had spoken with Myra and was out in the hallway, and I believe it was Ken said, Andy, Mama wants to talk to you. And so I go back into the room. Here she is getting ready for her departure, and you know what she's doing? She's encouraging me. She said, don't you get disappointed. You hang in there. Now listen to me, don't be disappointed. She was very gracious. And I'm sure each of you have some times like that maybe you can tell. But also she was gracious to my wife. I don't know if I can tell this exactly right. Now y'all don't in no way think that Hopewell Friends Meeting put this upon Kathy or us or I don't know how other churches do, but Kathy, because of her upbringing, felt like for a preacher's wife, they should always wear a dress. And Miss Myra gave Kathy permission <laughs> to wear pants. And she said, if everybody else don't approve, that doesn't matter. I approve. So it's okay. She was very gracious to my wife. She was gracious to her family. She was gracious to this meeting. She was gracious to Jamaica. She was gracious to the needy. And I think it's okay for me to say she was gracious to everyone. She's a woman of grace, a precious gift from God. I, intelligent, knowledge, skills. I wished I had some of the knowledge and skills that she had, manages things well, home, work, finances. I know I sat in on a few meetings having to do with missions and outreach or uh, other maybe financial decisions and stuff from the uh, ladies group, the circle. And when it come time to give to something, Myra, you could just see her calculating. And a number usually would be thrown out of what we were going to do. And you know what? With Myra in the room, that number was usually always doubled or more. If we said we were going to give 250, it was 500. If we were going to give 500, it was probably 1,000. She figured out a way to make the most contribution that was possible to help those in need. What a blessing. She was very, very intelligent. One of the comments she said, is I think we can do more than that. If we have it, give it. She was a woman of intelligence, a precious gift from God. F, faithfulness, loyal, committed, full of faith. She faithfully used the gifts and abilities she had to serve God and others. Now, I'm probably going to miss some here, but I'm just going to put a few things that I know of. The North Carolina Yearly Meeting, Southern Quarter Youth Activities, and I was involved in some of those back in the day. I know I've got a Baptist, more of a Baptist background, but I got some Quaker in me too. United Society of Friends Women, Quaker Lake, Jamaica, working with the kids and the adults missions and let me just stop right here I know in the Bible we talk about David and the thing that goes along with David the connotation along with that a man after God's own heart Myra Brady was a woman after God's own heart and the reason why I know that is I believe with all my heart God's heartbeat is missions I believe any church that's going to be blessed is going to have to strongly support missions. I believe for our nation to continue to be blessed, we got to continue to be strong in missions. And Myra's heartbeat was missions. She loved to give. She loved to support things. She loved to work to help out. And what a great thing. Brady Dodge, Brady Car and Truck Center, 
Hopewell Friends Meeting, Asheboro Business Women's Association, her husband, her kids, her family, weddings. I heard that over and over. She planned this wedding or that wedding and done this or that. And maybe some of you in here, she did your wedding. But she was faithful. She was committed. She was loyal. She was full of faith. She's a woman full of faithfulness, a precious gift from God. T, tenderness and toughness. Now, I've been talking pretty sweet about Myra. <laughs> but Myra had a tough side, too. She started raising those eyebrows. <laughs> and you knew you probably were getting in a little bit of trouble, treading maybe in a place maybe you shouldn't be treading. I think even sometimes in the room when we were talking, telling stories, I don't know if she was happy about some of those stories. Those eyebrows seemed like they went up. I'm like, oh, she's still hearing us. <laughs> but that's good to have some toughness about you, to have some backbone, to have some courage. You need that in life. And she had it. But she had the tenderness to go along with it. And man, how we need that in the world that we live in. She was affectionate and strong. Dignity and wisdom to break down walls and put us skin to skin and heart to heart. It didn't matter if you didn't have tons of money or if you did have tons of money. She could make you feel right at home. That tenderness and toughness to balance it out. My daughter made this comment. I'm so grateful. We hadn't been here but a couple Sundays, and we got to go out to eat at Coach's. I think Becky maybe was with us, and, and also Wayne. And now Wayne and Myra both are in heaven, not suffering anymore. Thank God for that. But we got to go out to eat, and the kids got to go out with us some too. But the last time that we got to eat, Lauren's boyfriend was with us. Anna's boyfriend was with us. Joshua's girlfriend was with him. We had a huge table. And Lauren said, you know what I think of when I think of Myra? She said, everyone's welcome at Myra's table. I like that. Is everyone welcome at your table? I hope so. The tenderness and the toughness. She told it like it was. She's a woman of tenderness and toughness, a precious gift from God. Meyer cared deeply, I think, about how she looked. I may be just a little bit wrong about that, but I think I'm right. I couldn't believe going to the hospital and how good her hair looked. <laughs> I told her, I said, Myra, if I'd been laying in a hospital bed this long, I said, my hair would be everywhere, man. I don't know how it happened. Robin, I don't know if y'all all helped out or the people there, but everybody took care of that. And even when she made it to hospice house, I came into the room and I'm like, wow. And I think you had borrowed a curling iron from somebody at hospice and fixed her mama's hair. And I think even the fingernails were getting done uh, there. But she cared tremendously about how she looked and she was a very beautiful lady. On the outside, look at that. Now that might be a glamour shot, I don't know, but it's still beautiful picture, right? Well, she was even more beautiful on the inside. Now I'm going to read one more time what it said in Proverbs 31 at the end. It says this. I want to make sure I get the part about the beauty. It may take me a second. I thought I had it marked. Charm is deceitful and beauty does not last. We go back to the dust from which we came from. But thanks be to God, one day there's going to be a resurrection and we're going to get a new body, glorified body, like his body, fashioned like his. Uh, 
We'll be all right in the body category eventually, but this one we have right now goes back to dust. Charm is deceitful and beauty does not last, but a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. Myra was a precious gift from God. I praise God for her life and I didn't need to say anything. Myra's already preached her message and we all know what a dramatic impact she had on this world. And I pray that in our hearts, we wanna make that same type of impact. I pray that people can look at our lives and say, man, they're a precious gift from God. At this time, the Striders are gonna come and close us out with heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Miss Myra is walking around in glory land right now. I pray that glory fills your soul. Father, we thank you so much for the life of Sister Myra Brady. Thank you for the dramatic impact it had upon all of our lives. Thank you for the precious memories that we can cherish. Lord, I pray that you would help each one of us to have a heart for missions, to have a heart for people, and truly be a gift to those that we come in contact with, that we can help pe point people to the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray now that you would continue to strengthen this family, undergird them, help them as only you can, and we'll give you the praise and the glory for it. For it's in Jesus' name we pray.
Amen.